Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this channel. Today we're going to be seeing a very small, brief uh, lesson, and it's going to be uh, how to do the custom interface for Seabrush. So here we go. Let's see here. There we go. Oh no, the image is really big. Let me just adjust this real quick. There we go. So um, normally when I teach either Maya, ZBrush, Unreal, anything, I try to keep everything as simple as possible and I don't usually modify things heavily because a lot of people are working with the stock uh, software and I don't wanna be doing some confusing stuff. So I don't, I don't use a lot of macros or shortcuts and stuff. I try to keep everything clean. However, in ZBrush for a long time, I've been using this custom interface. It's a really, really easy interface that I wanna show you how to build and, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to customize it to whatever you think you're gonna need. So here we go. The first thing I'm gonna do, let, let me open whatever project I have here. Let me see. Uh, let's just do the demo head. There we go. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here into preferences. I'm gonna go into configuration and I'm gonna save this UI. Just to have a backup of this, I'm gonna save it right where it's saved. So I'm gonna call this Ave custom UI. If you guys are interested in having this UI, let me know and I'll be happy to share it. I mean, it's, it's just a file, we just need to find a way to upload this, but, but I, I can share it, no problem. And I'm gonna go again, preferences, and I'm gonna say restore standard UI. So this is the stock UI that you get, or the basic UI you get when you open ZBrush. And uh, there's a couple of things I don't like about it. Uh, the orange, to me, the color is a little bit too intense. And then there's several buttons that are missing that I think are really, really helpful. So here we go, it's very easy. I'm just gonna go into preferences. I'm gonna say configuration and I'm gonna say enable customize. The enable customize, as the name implies, will allow you to start moving things around. So for instance, this button, homepage, I don't really need the homepage. Like I know what the homepage is gonna give me. It's just the news and stuff about ZBrush, which is really useful, of course. There's like the new updates and uh, some very cool works from other artists, but I, I don't want that button there because I'm not gonna be using it. So I'm just gonna press control shift and drag this button sorry, control uh, alt and drag this button into the uh, canvas and that's gonna erase that button from there. So that means that now I can place something in there that's gonna be a little bit more useful. In, in older versions, there was this thing called uh, C projectioner, I think, or something. Uh, and uh, it was really, really invasive. So I always took it out. Uh, now I'm gonna go into the most common things that I use and I'm gonna start modifying or bringing them into, the, into this area up here. So for instance, Dynamesh. Dynamesh is one of those things that I always, always, always use. So I'm gonna go here into Dynamesh and I'm just gonna press Control Alt and drag and drop the Dynamesh button like there, for instance. I can also drag like this resolution slider. So there we go. So I can dynamically change the resolution up here without having to go into Dynamesh. Uh, Siri Mesher is another one that I, I use frequently. So I'm just gonna drag the Siri Mesher there at the side of the Dynamesh. There we go. And, uh, and yeah, now, uh, if you've seen the last couple of videos, whenever we export from ZBrush, I always tell you guys, go to the export options and make sure that group is turned off because we don't want to export the subgroups or the, or the polygroups. So this one, I always like to have it like up here just to know that if this thing is turned on, I just turn it off and that's it. That's another one of the ones that I use frequently. Uh, another one, I don't think I have it in my current one, but I've been using it quite often is here in the geometry on the modified topology, the mirror and weld. So as you can see, this one's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna try and find a nice place for it, like for instance there. I, I like to keep things uh, nicely organized, so there we go. Delete hidden is one that I definitely, definitely use, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, let's see if we are, there's another one that we use normally. I'm trying to think under the formation tab, sometimes the mirror function comes into place. I'm just gonna leave it there. It's useful to have it. And again, you're free to customize this however you want. You can add as many, as many things as you want. And I believe if you were to add something that's like really big like this, you can actually like add another space here. Like it will make it bigger. So, so it will allow you to get more stuff in there. I don't like to clutter my workspace as much. I just use whatever is the most uh, important things there. Now, uh, there's a couple of other things that I like to have. For instance, on the light options, I like to have this light uh, sphere right here because I can change the light and, and see how my model looks. So I'm gonna control alt and drag this thing down here as well, just to, to have the little sphere uh, in there. So again, if I just click here, it's uh, it's as if I went all the way over here and it, it makes it easier. If you're working on a, on a like, uh, drawing board, or not drawing board, like a, like a Cintiq or something with the, with the screen. This is actually very helpful because you don't have to move your brush as much and, and you become a little bit faster on the on the on on most of the things. Now, other things that I like to do on the brush palette, there's this option called uh, 
auto masking, back face masking, and this is per brush. So I like to have this one up here. Again, uh, what this does is whenever you're working on a model and you're working with like a very, very big brush, by default, the brush will start like getting stuff out of the, of the backside of your character. It happens like, let's say like I'm working on this part of the head. I might be, let's say I don't have symmetry on, I might be dragging things from the other side, depending on how big my brush is like this, see that? And if you don't want that to happen, you just turn on back face masking and you can modify this thing here and nothing's gonna be moved on this side. So back face masking is really, really, really helpful. But the, prob the problem is that it's per brush. So each specific brush, brush has to be turned on. And that's why having it up here, it's, uh, it's a good idea. I'm actually gonna hold it here. So it's a little bit tidier. Now you can also move uh, brushes, like certain brushes that you don't know the shortcut or that you feel that you use way too much and you don't wanna have them in here. For instance, the C-Melder and the c Remesher guides are two of the ones that I use. So you're gonna select it. And then on the brush tab, you're gonna have this one right here, or uh, this one right here. So just gonna drag and drop, and there we go. So we have the C-Melder. And then again, I just select like the c Remesher guides and on the brush tab, there's gonna be this c Remesh guides and we just move it here. And again, if I just press it, it's like selecting the brush. So I know a lot of people that have all of the brushes here. I think you can also drag and drop from here. No, I think you need to go here. I don't usually like having my brushes. I know there are some artists that have their, like all of their brushes down here, like the clay and the clay buildup. I, I, I prefer using shortcuts for those, uh, but just it's, it's a nice uh, way to do it. Color, fill objects, one of the other ones that I use. So I'm gonna go here, fill objects. Uh, that one I use to fill with the, either a material or a color. So that's one of the, of the main things that I do. And uh, I think that's it. I think those are the main, the main things that I normally use for my for my setup here. Uh, now for the color, that's super simple to change up here in the on the custom, not the custom, yeah, on the eye colors. You're just gonna change the switches, the switch one, switch two, uh, slider knob one and slider knob two. And one quick way to do it, just click and drag to your color wheel, pick your favorite color. I like, uh, my favorite color is green, uh, looks good. But <laughs> but on, on Silver I like the, the blue, so we're gonna go right here. Now you can also like select the blues here and you're gonna get more gradients. So I'm gonna go get preferences, switch one. Let's go for like a little bit of a, a duller blue, not as saturated. And then what I do is I just sample the exact same color again. There we go. So now as you can see, my whole uh, my whole UI is, uh, is properly set up. So now you're gonna go into preferences, you're gonna say config and you're gonna disable enable customize and you're gonna save this UI. I'm gonna save this as custom UI, let's call this version two, which is the one I'm gonna be using now. There we go. And you wanna make sure that you uh, store the configuration right here, store config. So by doing store config, what's gonna happen is every time you open ZBrush, this is gonna be the basic thing because otherwise you're gonna go back to the standard UI and you might get some things that are not what you're looking for. So by saving this, the store config, now everything is there. A couple of extra things about the uh, customization here. On the preference panel, you have the undo history, which is really important. As you can see, 10,000 max undo is, is fine. It will depend on your memory, of course. If you feel like your ZBrush is getting a little bit too slow, you might wanna like change this. Um, quick save, you wanna say how, how much or how many, uh, how often you want the quick save to work. Usually after uh, ZBrush is resting or just like there for a minute, I'll get an auto save. But you can see that this can quickly give you like a lot of files here. Like look at how many files we have here. And this could definitely hit your memory. So if you wanna change that, you can change the maximum uh, maximum duration and, and, the, and the rest duration. This is, if you're working e every 20 minutes, it will try to do an auto save, which I think is fine. Uh, and then if, you, if you're sure that you have everything that you need and you don't need to save anything anymore, just go into, into uh, their preferences again and delete the quick save files. I strongly advise you do that frequently, especially if you don't have a lot of uh, space on your computer because they can take quite a bit of space. Uh, screensaver, I don't like the screen. I mean, I like the screensaver, but it's way too little of a time. So I'm gonna change this to, uh, let's say five minutes, so 360. And I'm just gonna say again, config and just uh, ba -ba -ba, start config and say, okay. So now uh, everything should be working. And that's it, I think that's that's pretty much it. Those are the, the main things about like customiz co customizing ZBrush. Again, it's not necessary. It is a nice little uh, extra that you can do. So feel free to do it. If you want, let me know if anyone of you guys know how to share the file to everyone on, on the YouTube channel. 
uh, I'll be happy to do so. If not, I'll probably just leave, leave a link or something from from Google Drive for you to download. But let me know in the comments if you wanna if you wanna have the file, and I'll be happy to to provide it to you so that you can have the exact same interface. And whenever we're working on this stuff, you can have the the same uh, appearance. So that's it. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.